All right, The Last of Us live action adaptation. It's out on HBO, HBO Max. Well, the first episode is anyway. But it's a live action adaptation of a video game. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, that gets kind of iffy. On the other hand, animated adaptations, they've been doing pretty well. So now we have the HBO series. And after the first episode, I gotta say, they nailed a lot in terms of tone, atmosphere. It's absolutely The Last of Us. It's when I watch something like this, that's an adaptation of something or takes place in the universe or world of something. I like to think to myself, okay, if I didn't know what property this was, if someone was like, hey, here's a clip. What do you think this is? I like to think I'd be able to be like, that's The Last of Us. Cause it looks and feels like The Last of Us. But what I liked about the series is it took time to develop more about the world so you you understand more about the threat you understand more about Joel's family dynamic his relationship with his daughter spoiler alert for episode one by the way I should say that you've probably played the game anyway but spoiler warning just being fair it really let you marinate in a world that I like seeing in stories that's before the big fall of civilization where it's like everyone's going about their daily lives they have no idea that this is their last day in this world as they know it and this is the moment i realize this show this series is treating the audience like new viewers they're assuming that viewers of the show have not played the game and you don't know how the story is going to unfold because with this build-up it's actually kind of epic to see it through this lens one would assume that the daughter is going to be the main character, like the daughter-Joel dynamic is what's going to carry us through this story. And it kind of is in spirit, spirit being the operative word because she dies. But in the game when Joel's daughter died, it was crushing then, it was crushing in this episode, but I liked how we got more time with Joel and his daughter. Also, the beginning of this series has this talk show interview in the 60s. I was like, is that John Hanna? Nice. They're all sitting around talking about pandemics. They're like, oh, viruses, those are frightening. And John Hannah's like, no. Well, let me tell you about fungi. And at first, everyone else at this table's like, <laughs> he thinks that's scary. <laughs> I told you it was funny. And then by the end of his monologue, they're all like, more after this break. Which is great. You want that connective tissue with our world. It's one thing to be like, yeah, we're watching a world where civilization has fallen. That's entertaining, it's scary in its own right. But it's the next level kind of thing when you can connect it to our world and be like, our world could become that world. Back in the day when The Last of Us came out and I found out that fungus that makes these zombies was a real thing in our world, just affects ants, it doesn't affect people. It scared the living shit out of me and I'm glad this show, this episode went a bit deeper into it. Now, Pedro Pascal is Joel. I thought he's great as Joel because he brings to Joel what we need to feel in a live action series. That's not a game. See, in the game, there's this symbiotic dance that's going on between gamer and game or gamer and, and video game character that they're playing as, rather. Maybe I'm projecting and assuming everyone does this, but when I'm playing The Last of Us and I'm Joel, it's not just Joel. There's a piece of me in there, too. I'm projecting myself into the character. But when you have a live-action adaptation, you don't have that. You don't have that gamer experience of the character being a part of you, and you're playing the character as you would play this world, but also being a little more hardcore because the game demands it. Casting Joel, I don't envy the task. That's a difficult task to do. You have to cast someone where it's known that they've done some bad shit to survive this world on the basis that they are alive and surviving in this world, but also have the human element, the human connection, that thing that links the audience to the character where we're rooting for them. In a world where it's not a video game, so you don't have that gamer playing a character and they're projecting themselves into the character. So that's already kind of established. And Pedro Pascal does what he does. He brought that charisma, that humanity, that relatability, all wrapped up in Joel in that he also brings the damage. He's generally most people if they survive 20 years in this shitty world. Your natural inclination might just be, no, I'm not gonna do that. If civilization ever falls, I will be decent. There are people like that in this world. They're called dead. You toughen up or you die in a world like this. This world is shit. That's another thing I liked about the series. It hammers home the point. It's like, no one's thriving. Everyone's just surviving. They're trying to get to tomorrow. Bella Ramsey is Ellie. I've always been looking forward to. I'm like, I think she's gonna be a great Ellie. I thought she was a great Ellie. Well, I mean, first episode. Little Lady Mormont was a scene stealer from the get go. She's a badass. I feel like she is a little more rough around the edges than Ellie from the game. I think Ellie from the game, I feel like she was a little, you know, nicer. Which to be fair to the world of The Last of Us, Ellie in the first Last of Us game, I was always like, how did this kid 
survive this long in this shitty world. Whereas Bella Ramsey, Ellie, a little more defiant, talks a bit more shit. I buy the fact that she'll stab someone in the knee with a switchblade. So there is that in the context of the world, it completely fits. And the episode ends with that moment from the game where they're all on their knees and they, you know, they have the hands behind their head. There's one cop, cop, military person, officer, uh, whatever you want to say. Though in the game, there are two of them. They both get shot. And this one, Ellie stabs him in the leg, like in the game, and Joel just beats the living piss out of him. I will say that that bite reveal was really rushed though. And it bothered me. That scenario becomes so chaotic and you hear sirens and troops are moving in. They're like, we gotta go now. And they're like, you're infected, Ellie? She's like, no, look, I got a scar. I got this bite a while ago. Come on, we gotta go. And they're like, we gotta go, Joel, we gotta go. And then they flee into the city where the buildings are all jacked up, like in the game, and then end credits. But that reveal was so fast. See, up until this point, this series has been operating as though the viewer has not played the game. This was the moment I felt the show was operating as though the audience had already played the game, already knew the reveal about the bite. Like it wasn't anything special. Like they didn't just tell the entire audience, all the viewers, hey, this is the point. I felt like the conversation needed more drama. It needed to take a breath and marinate in that moment like the game did in its cutscene with the same reveal. This girl is immune to the thing that's turning people into walking fungus husk zombies. No, let's just speed through that. Like in the game, Tess pulls a gun on Ellie is like, explain this shit right now. In this series, that doesn't happen. Why would Ellie not have a gun pulled on her if someone sees a bite? All in all, The Last of Us, on the basis that it was written by the screenwriter of Chernobyl, I was like, I'm going to give this a shot. And I thought the first episode was really good. It's what you liked from the game in execution that delves deeper into the fungus and into the world, into the relationships before they end horribly and shatter a guy's entire world. And that's the reason Joel is the way he is. Seeing more of that, no, feeling more of that, really important in an adaptation. It seems to be an adaptation that wants to do the series justice right down to the intro. HBO always has pretty epic looking intros and the song is the theme song from the game titled, yes, The Last of Us. Music is a very important thing in entertainment. It's what binds us to that world. A world actually sounds a certain way. And it does that with the soundtrack, with the musical score. It's actually been a while since I've played The Last of Us. I, I want to pick up The Last of Us again and play it. Because I own The Last of Us and the remaster, the remastered remaster I haven't gotten yet because I'm like, I, I already own two versions of this game. Paying full price for the same game third time around just feels weird to me. Still, great world. And as for the first episode, great adaptation. I don't know if I'm gonna talk about The Last of Us episodes week to week like I did with House of the Dragon. I'm gonna play it by ear. But hey, we'll see how it goes. I don't plan a week in advance. All right, so The Last of Us episode one, have you seen it? What did you think about it? Whatever you thought, comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you wanna see more, click right here to see more.